Right now on the River Region Evening Edition, the New Madrid fault line is more than 30 years overdue for an earthquake. Learn about a series of drills local emergency operations took part of to stay prepared. Also, the Secret Service confirmed shots were fired outside the White House yesterday. We have the latest. And it's not the Super Bowl, but community members hit the lanes outside the Student Center today, hoping to discourage a smoky habit. Live from the campus of Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Bringing you the news from around the world and across the River Region. This is the Evening Edition. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Curtis Sheehan. And I'm Jessica Anderson. The state of Illinois is currently conducting an earthquake response simulation. Evening Edition's Rob Delson is in now with more. Rob, what is the state doing in case of an emergency and how long will it last? Well, today marked date number two, Curtis, um, for the earthquake simulation process and it's emergency operations centers that are conducting these. These EOCs are given specific situations by the state in case of an earthquake, something like a fire at Brush Towers, for example. Once given, it's the job of the EOC to decide what is needed in terms of fuel, water, firemen, and police officers, all of, and all other needed essentials. When members of the EOC decide what is needed, they make the call out to the state for help to receive these needs. Carbondale's EOC is located in the town civic center. Carbondale and the rest of the Southern Illinois region lies near the New Madrid Fault, which can cause an earthquake at any given time. Fire Captain Taro Kaufman says, with the increase in earthquakes, Southern Illinois needs to be ready to respond. Nevada has been having earthquakes lately, you know, record earthquake for that area. Uh, so people are pretty wise and, you know, they want to be prepared. So, uh, you know, it's, it's real proactive for the state to do a huge exercise like this. And guys, with talking more uh, with Captain Kaufman, he says the most important thing for people is to have a disaster kit ready with water, food, medication, a battery-powered radio. He says in case of an emergency, it may take up to 72 hours for people to receive help. That's why they are doing these exercises today. Thanks, Rob. As the unions and SIU administration work on finalizing contract agreements, this week we're taking a look into the tentative agreements reached by the four Illinois Education Association unions. Today we are focusing on the Graduate Assistance United. Their proposed contracts agreed to the university's offered a stipend increase of 1% on January 1st, 2012, another 1% July 1st, 2012, and an additional 2% July 1st, 2013. To offset dramatic fee increases, the tentative agreement states that if fees go up more than 4% in 2012 or more than 5% in 2013, the GAU can reopen the stipend portion of the contract to renegotiate for higher pay to offset out-of-pocket expenses. As for health care, the union wasn't able to bargain for immediate changes. However, members elected to take a long-term approach that would include collaboration with the undergraduate student government and the graduate professional student council to ultimately provide better health care for the entire SIU student body. The final pieces continue to come together for members of the four unions on the SIUC campus. Members of the Civil Service Union are voting tonight until 6.15. The Departmental Representation Council for the Faculty Association votes tomorrow at 5.30. Then all due paying members vote next Monday, November 28th. Non-tenured track faculty will vote next Wednesday at 5.30. The graduate students ratified their agreement on November 14th. That includes stipend increases over the next three years and measures to keep student fees reasonable. Today I feel like it was the first day that it felt like November outside. It was pretty cold outside. It was a little chilly. The fall leaves are coming in beautifully. Here's Janet Kennedy with a quick look at weather. Yeah, it sure was a lot colder today than it has been over the last week, and it's going to continue to be cold. It looks like we may not see those warm skies back again, but the good news is we're going to see clear skies for at least the next couple of days. Tonight we'll see a low of 32 degrees, very chilly, but with clear skies. By the morning, we'll see some sun again with a high of 39 degrees, and by midday, we'll warm up to 49 degrees. Now, we may see some rain coming this weekend. I'll let you know when we can expect to see that rain. Stay with me. Thanks, Jana. 
Illinois Lieutenant Governor Sheila Simon is asking a state task force to recommend more online training for rural emergency medical providers. Simon says that paramedics and others have often had to pay for their own training. This can include lost wages and overnight travel. The task force will make recommendations at the end of the year. Farmers in Midwestern states are receiving some good news about their farmland. According to two new Federal Reserve surveys, farmland in parts of the Midwest are up 25% last year. This marks the highest increase in three decades and shows how successful harvests and higher farming incomes are contributing to the surge. Farmers in the south, southern plains, however, saw a modest increase because of the devastating droughts this year. Poor families face higher income taxes in Illinois than almost all other states even before this year's tax increase. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities conducted a study that ranked Illinois seventh in a taxes for a two-parent family of four at the poverty line and was ranked sixth in taxes owed by a single parent raising three children on poverty level wages. Even though Alabama had highest taxes for poor families in both categories, the study found that most states don't apply income taxes to families living in poverty. In celebration of the American Cancer Society's 36th annual Great American Smokeout, SIU Students, Health Services Wellness Center, and other student organizations have joined to host a Go Coal Turkey Bowl. Located on the north end of the Student Center this afternoon, students were bowling using frozen turkeys. All smokers were asked to commit to one full day of going smoke-free, and for a donation of $5, that will be donated to local food pantries and shelters. Yeah, we're really just trying to raise awareness and improve people's quality of life. You know, it's really, uh, this age group might not, uh, you know, believe that they're at any risk, but they really truly The non-perishable food items and money donated will be all going to local food pantries and shelters. People that spend a lot of time playing video games may have something in common with compulsive gamblers. A group of European scientists studied a group of 14-year-olds. Half the kids played more than nine hours a week of video games, while the other played less than that. Researchers found that kids showed more brain activity when they're losing, a trait also seen in gamblers. Experts say research that could help treat addictive behaviors. President Obama headed down under today for his first president trip to Australia. It's a good thing, too, as the Secret Service continues to investigate a White House shooting. You're watching Evening Edition. The Secret Service confirmed earlier today that a bullet shattered a window at the White House. The bullet was stopped by protective glass after it was fired yesterday, and a second bullet was also found. The Secret Service has not confirmed whether or not this incident is connected to reports of gunfire near the White House on Friday. Witnesses say they heard gunshots and saw two speeding vehicles in the area and an AK-47 was also recovered. President Obama was not at the White House at the time. While shots were being fired at the White House, President Obama was visiting in Australia for his very first time. On Wednesday afternoon, Air Force One touched down in the capital city of Canberra. The president was met by a group of dignitaries, including General Quentin Price and Prime Minister Julia Gilliard. During his visit, President Obama is expected to talk extensively with the Prime Minister about economic and security issues. Obama is also expected to announce an expanded American military presence in Australia. Uh, we'll enhance our ability to train, exercise, and operate with allies and partners across the region. Uh, and that, in turn, will allow us to work with these nations to respond even faster to a wide range of challenges, including humanitarian crises and disaster relief as well as promoting security cooperation across the region. The president's trip to Australia was postponed twice after he took office, once by the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and once so the president could lobby for his health care reform bill. After leaving Australia, the president wrapped up his Pacific trip with a stop in Indonesia, where he spent several years of his childhood. Consumers are getting a small break on rising prices. The Consumer Price Index shows about Prices fell about 1% in the month of October. Compared to last year at the same time, prices are up 3.5%. Inflation measure is based on the cost of stuff like food, gas, clothing, and, uh, and cars. Cheaper gas prices mean that consumers spend less at the gas station, freeing them to spend money elsewhere. After Silvio Perlusconi's resignation Saturday night, Italy has a new prime minister. Mario Mentoni has been officially appointed as the prime minister of Italy. Montoni faces an uphill climb as Italy has one of the highest national debts in Europe and has seen low growth in recent years. 
While he believes his government will not last past the scheduled elections in 2013, Monte hopes to improve corporations in the Italian government. And we hope to uh, lead the country and I will do my best and my government in order to obtain cohesion between the different political factions. Monti went on to say that the Italian government could at any time dissolve his government due to lack of trust. This move makes Italy the second European country in a month to change prime ministers, following Greece's replacement of Lucas Papadimos. After a spring-like start to the week, temperatures were down today. Will they continue to drop? Janet Kennedy is in next with your full weather forecast. But first, stocks took a dive on Wall Street today. Here are your closing numbers. Adopting a healthy lifestyle is not only good for our bodies, but our, also our brain. Cheryl Castro tells us what we can do to help keep the brain young. Experts who specialize in the aging brain say just because we grow old doesn't necessarily mean we have to lose our memory and develop dementia. Making healthy lifestyle changes now can help stave off the faulty thinking and failing memory often associated with old age. So what's the secret? In a word, exercise. It has been shown to be the most important factor in keeping the brain young later in life. Researchers say even moderate exercise, such as walking three times a week, can help keep us mentally sharp and increase the size of a brain area responsible for forming new memories. Staying socially active and reducing stress levels are also key to keeping the brain healthy. Engaging in new and fun mental activities, such as learning a new language or taking up a musical instrument, can help keep the brain sharp. Scientists know that both obesity and a high-fat diet raise the risk for dementia, so good eating habits are important. Experts suggest a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, as well as foods high in omega-3 fatty acids, such as fish, walnuts, and flaxseed. And at your next doctor visit, have your homocysteine levels checked. Research has shown that high readings of this amino acid may double the risk for Alzheimer's. For today's Health Minute, I'm Cheryl Castro. In addition to eating healthy, according to AARP, walking a mile a day also seems to help reduce brain shrinkage, brain shrinkage over time. And now the forecast for the River Region. This is your Evening Edition weather. Well, we saw quite a bit of a cool down today and actually we saw temperatures drop down about 20 degrees today and we've saw some breezy skies uh, the past couple of days that will continue throughout the night. We're going to see winds gust up to more than 20 miles per hour and even though we are going to have this cool down and these high winds, we will have clear skies as for right now, but on the weekend we could see some showers. But right now we're currently sitting at 48 degrees. Our dew points at 23 and the humidity is at 37%. Winds are coming from the north at 15 miles per hour right now, but as I said earlier, they can gust up to 20 miles per hour. If we take a look at our almanac today, we saw a high of 52 degrees, a low of 28 degrees. We didn't see any rainfall today, and this keeps our monthly at about 2 inches and 3 fourth inches. Now, if we take a look at temperatures throughout the region, well, we can see Belleville and Mount Vernon are both at 46 degrees, Carbondale at 48, and Marion at 50. Cape Girardeau is our uh, warmest spot, and it's at 52 degrees. Now, taking a look at our satellite, we can't see a whole lot of cloud coverage in our area. All the cloud coverage is to the south of us, and that's why we saw all those sunny skies to today. Now, if we look at our uh, national radar, we can see that over to the west and the east of us, we can see some rainfall, and we can see a lot of snow over in our west and to the north of us, but the good news is we aren't seeing any snow, even though we're seeing these cool temperatures. Thankfully, they're not cold enough for us to see any snow, and this uh, system to our west of us, we shouldn't, that shouldn't affect us at least the, in the next coming days. It's going to move south of us, so we will see clear skies at least for the next couple of days. And for tonight, we will see clear skies with a low of 32 degrees. By tomorrow, we'll see sunny skies all throughout the day with a high of 49 degrees. And then by tomorrow night, we'll see a low of 34 degrees with clear skies. Now on Friday, we will see sunny skies again, a high of 55 degrees, warming up just a little bit. 
On Saturday, a warm-up again to 61 degrees with uh, partly cloudy skies. And then by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we'll start to see some showers. But by Monday and Tuesday, we'll get back into the mid-50s. So, Jana, what can you tell me about these cool temperatures? I mean, yesterday it was beautiful. It was warm. Now it's freezing. Yeah. It's been so warm. It's almost, it's felt more like spring. Now, the thing is, people are, you know, saying how cold it is today. But the in the reality, it's actually still warmer than it normally is this time of year. We're seeing about five degrees warmer than it normally is. So, it's really not even that cold yet. So, and we're going to see a little bit of an increase. But... Yeah, it's still warmer than normal, so. All right. Well, thanks, Jana. Thanks, Jana. After Saturday's loss to Ohio Dominican, the SIU men's basketball team looked for their first win of the season last night against St. Louis University. And find out the latest dilemma between the NBA players and the owners. Matt Vanderbilt is now in the sports. Matt. The St. Louis Blues are looking to win their sixth straight home game against one of their division rivals. And find out which legendary college basketball coach engraved his name in the history books. I will have all that and more next in sports. And now the latest scores and highlights from across the River Region. This is Evening Edition Sports. The SIU men's basketball team battled the St. Louis Billikens last night, hoping to come away with, the, with their first win of the season. But there were no easy baskets for the Salukis as they converted just eight buckets for the game and shot for a school record low 20% from the field. The Billikens finished the first half with a 29-9 run, overwhelming the Salukis' defense. Southern, however, was the aggressor in the second half, outscoring St. Louis 27-24, but it was all Billikens as they go on to take this one by a final of 61-42, Head coach Chris Lowry says his team needs to figure out their mistakes. I think they just got to be solid. You know, I think we, we have to get a shot up and, you know, they just got to make plays. And, you know, you, you, you want your seniors to be your guys leading, but, you know, when they don't, the guys got to step up. And it's obvious that those guys aren't afraid. Saluki baseball may not be here yet, but they are already making news with the early signing period of new recruits. Head coach Ken Henderson has signed five recruits for the 2013 season. Highlighting the class is Central Arizona Junior College transfer Matt Jones. Before playing at CAJC, Jones played Division I baseball at Northern Colorado, where he saw success at both at the plate and, beyond, and behind. Jones had a 420 batting average and 19 starts for the Bears. The St. Louis Blues hosted their division rival, the Detroit Red Wings, last night as they look to win their sixth straight home game. New Cardinals manager Mike Matheny was on hand for the ceremonial puck. We go to the first when Justin Ablocator beats Chris Ruck Russell to the puck behind the net and feeds it to Drew Miller for the goal and an early 1-0 lead for the Red Wings. With two and a half minutes left in the first, Kevin Shattenkirk rips a shot, but Matt Diagostini cleans up the mess and pokes it home for the rebound power play goal. We're all leaving in the third until Alexander Steen picks up a loose puck and sends one right past Jimmy Howard for the go-ahead goal. The Blues take this one by final of 2-1. to one. Negotiations for the NBA lockout have moved from the bargaining table to federal court. The NBA Players Association has filed for a class action antitrust lawsuit against the NBA. According to multiple reports, at least two lawsuits in two different states have been filed by NBA players, including Oklahoma City's Kevin Durant and the New York Knicks' Carmelo Anthony. According to the Associated Press, the lawsuits have been filed in the Northern District of California and in Minnesota. The status of NBA games this year is still unknown. Duke's head basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski looked to get in the record books last night to become the all-time winningest coach in Division I college basketball history. We pick up the action towards the end of the first half when former Saluki Brandon Wood hits a buzzer-beating floater to make it a one-point deficit at the break. But Duke's Seth Curry could not be stopped as he gets the ball on the wing, ball fakes, and puts up a three to give Duke a seven-point lead. Let's fast forward towards the end of the game as Seth Curry collects the rebound to cement Coach K's name into the history books, 
passing his mentor and legendary coach Bob Knight with 903 career wins. Krzyzewski says that he is happy to spend the moment with his mentor, Bob Knight. This moment to have uh, the two of us together, because you don't know that that would happen. And uh, uh, that, was, that was really a, a good thing for the two of us to be together tonight. So we're, we're pleased with uh, the win, and, um, and we're pleased with the fact that we can get on with the season. Thanks, Matt. No problem. The Macy's Thanksgiving Parade is just over a week away, but that's not stopping organizers from showing off what they have so far. We have footage of some of their first floats. Stay with us. Macy's unveiled a total of five new floats for its 85th annual Thanksgiving Day Parade. We're getting a sneak peek at some of the floats that will be gracing the streets of New York next week. Work is nowhere near finished for the parade officials. All these floats will have to be taken apart so they can fit through the Lincoln Tunnel next week when they are taken to the parade route in New York. So Jana, giving us another quick look at weather, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Well, we saw a cool down today and over the past couple of days, but it's going to get even warmer. Uh, we're going to see temperatures raise to 55 degrees on Friday. By Saturday, it will raise up to 61 degrees. And then by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're going to see showers and the temperatures will drop once again. All right. Thanks, Thank Jana. You. Thank you for joining us tonight. Evening Edition is now online at SIUTVNews.com, and you can follow us on Twitter at Rural Region News. I'm Curtis Sheehan. And I'm Jessica Anderson. For Jana Kennedy, Matt Vandervelt, and everyone here at the Evening Edition, have a great night.